Okay, what's up? So I just finished this render earlier today and I recorded the time lapse of the entire thing. So I'm just gonna go through that with you. I'm gonna comment on what I was thinking and what I was doing throughout the whole process and hopefully it'll be helpful so you can uh, see like what my process is like from start to finish. Yeah, so here it is. So just rewind to the beginning and let's just uh, watch this together. Okay, so opening up Blender, first thing I do is just save the project. Uh, I'm in Cycles, GPU, obviously. And right now I'm just going through my Instagram and finding an old artwork that I made a while ago. And what I'm doing is I'm just finding the date that I made it. So you can see here, I save all of my projects by date. And what I'm doing is I'm just finding, just searching the date that that was posted. And then I'm just taking a few assets from that uh, project. So there were some pictures of, or some textures of like money and some models of just bills. And sometimes that's a really nice, like starting point is to just go into an old project, take a bunch of shit from there and just make something completely new out of it. So that's uh, basically what I'm doing here. I think I, I swapped some of the textures. So instead of a $20 Canadian bill, I used a hundred dollar US bill. I just went on Unsplash, just found an image that I could use, um, downloaded it, and then just cropped the UV map to just the picture of the bill, which you'll see in a second. So let me just, uh, there we go. So we're on Unsplash here. And I just found, I think, yeah, this one. So just a picture of a hundred dollar bill on a counter, but we don't want the counter. We just want the bill. So I just had to take a plane that was roughly the size of that crop the UV map so that it's just covering the bill, just line up the corners. And then I'm just running it into the base color. I ran it into the roughness, but I don't think I ended up using that. Um, which, so I'll, I'll take it out later, but here I'm just running it through a hue saturation. So I'm desaturating it and then I'm running it through um, this multiply or this mix RGB node, the blending mode is set to multiply, I think maybe I left an overlay, but it's just mixing in some of that green kind of color. And then I'm just making it a bit darker with this curve right here. But for the most part, it's just the, the picture running into the base color. That's basically what it is. Just making it a bit more green. And, uh, what I did after that was I just, um, took the camera, positioned it straight above the bill and then just rendered that out as a texture. There's probably a faster way to do it. I could have just cropped it in Photoshop or something, but you can see me here just lining this up to the camera so that I could just render that out by itself and use it as a, a tileable texture. Um, so yeah, just lining up the corners again, save that as an image. And then now I could just put that new image of just the bill onto whatever I want. So you can see me just lining it up onto this thing here. I don't think I use this, but uh, just setting up the texture and so there we go. I just dropped it a statue from my asset library, some random thing I downloaded or bought a while ago and I'm just figuring out some lighting now. So I just put that same texture I just made onto this, made the world color black um, and then just setting up a spotlight just to figure out some potential lighting ideas that might work. One of the things you'll see me doing throughout this whole thing is like grabbing the light, moving it around, changing positions, rotating it, um, just trying out different angles and finding something that's gonna work. Um, so then I brought in a kit bash building here and you can see I'm just using the Neo Tokyo kit. Uh, so I'm just dropping buildings in here, taking the texture off, scaling them down and then putting that same dollar bill texture on these buildings. Here I'm just adding volume. So I just added a cube, scaled it up over the whole scene, put a volume scatter node onto it, and then changed the density down to like 0.02 is what I left it on maybe. And then uh, you can't really see it here. Let's see if I can rewind. Anisotropy, I think that's how you say it. I'm turning it up to 0.7 so that the um, volume, like the brightness of the volume is closer to the light source. And for the floor, I'm just using Quixel mega scans in the imperfections section underneath grunge maps. These are really, really nice for um, like those reflective floor textures. I think I just used one of these. For these ones, I like picking one of these textures that's uh, like a bit less harsh and uh, not as extreme. Like some of these ones, like this one here, you can see it's pretty intense. And I find it just doesn't look quite as nice as if you take one of the uh, lower contrast maps and just crunch it up yourself with a color ramp. Uh, just gives me a lot more control and just seems to look nicer. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I just dropped that in there, ran it through a color ramp, made it metallic, made it gold. And I think in the final piece, I desaturated that slightly, but it's, that's basically what the texture was. 
Okay. Next, I'm dropping in more buildings. Adding in some new buildings, duplicating some, scaling them around so you can't tell it's the same uh, building duplicated a bunch of times, but there's enough new ones too that it's fine. And that same exact texture is just on every single building model in the middle here. And you can see how much work the volumetrics are doing here. Um, just getting that nice light ray. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing, taking the texture off or all of the textures off and then just linking those materials to any of the, the materials that I already have set up, that, that money one. And I think you can see on the floor here, I was going back and forth between just putting this texture on everything and then having a metallic texture. So one of the things I hope you can see here is that um, it, a lot of this is just trial and error, just trying out things, trying textures that don't work, trying lighting setups that don't work, and just trying again and again and again until I find something that works with uh, this kind of setup. So here I'm just adding an icosphere. I decimated it. You can see the modifiers up here. Um, and then I added a wireframe just so that we get the edges to show of that. And then I'm just I'm using some uh, geometry nodes to just scatter some uh, spheres onto the very edges of that original icosphere. You can also use a hair particle system for that or just place them manually. It doesn't matter. Just get some spheres on there for that uh, techie kind of look. And the material is more complicated than it needed to be, but basically it's just a translucent shader with a noise texture that's driving the um, transparency of it. So I think I, yeah, I swapped this statue out here for one that was a bit higher detail and just seemed to work better. Um, and then just messing, messing with positioning of things um, adjusting the lighting, just figuring out what this is going to look like. Uh, moving buildings around. Yeah, you can see me just messing with the floor texture, just trying to find something that works here. So back to the metallic one, a bit more desaturated. Um, so with a lighting setup like this, uh, this is how you get really easy dramatic lighting is you just have like one light source um, just to create really harsh shadows on everything. And I love that kind of look. It just makes it a lot more exciting than if you have uh, a bunch of lights in your scene, just kind of fills in all those shadows and just gets rid of all the darkness, which is, um, it can look cool, but sometimes it's just nicer to have a lot of uh, really intense shadows. Okay, here I am trying out um, a sky in the background, which I didn't end up using, but again, just trial and error, just finding out, just trying as many things as I can to find out um, what's going to work and what's not. Again, moving the lighting around, um, trying out like if it's an area light, if, it's, if that's better, trying out point lights, trying out emission textures, moving things around all over the place, just trying to find out what the best lighting setup is. And I think this is the one I went with for the final one, is just having a spotlight straight above everything. Um, you can see how big the size of the light is on the spotlight. So it's a pretty soft fall off. And that's how you get that nice transition here from the really bright parts to all the way black is you just turn up the size of the spotlight and also turn up the blend, which uh, I don't know if I can see that setting, but in the spotlight, there's like a, a blend amount setting. Just I turn that all the way up. So it's all the way soft usually. So yeah, still just playing with the positioning of things, just moving stuff around and trying to find the best place for everything to fit into. And there I just made the light slightly blue and that just gives it a cool kind of look. And I just brought in, um, basically in that last artwork, I brought some models in from at the beginning. What I did in that one was I just uh, created a, a stack of bills. I think I used a, a tutorial from, I think his name is Default Cube on YouTube. He did a tutorial on how to make a stack of uh, dollar bills in Blender. Just search that up, like that, how to make a stack of bills in Blender. You'll find the exact tutorial. I made that and then I just used a rigid body simulation to just create a big pile of that. Um, and I think that's what I did for all the floating bills too. And I might've just uh, used a turbulence force field on that. I think that's what I did just to create some 
cool patterns and how it is flowing around. Yeah, so I'm just bringing in all those models from the last thing I made uh, and then just moving that around, just uh, finding out where they should go, where it looks best. Sometimes when you have, uh, like if there's no background here, it's all just black. So to fill that up with something happening, um, just having some kind of particles or some kind of, uh, like in this case, just a bunch of bills floating around. But sometimes what I'll do is just have like dust particles moving around, just something so it's not completely empty is always nice. And this is the first test render I did. So I think I had this on, you can see my settings up here, 4,000 by 5,000 set to 50%. So it's actually 2,000 by 2,500 for the test render. And for the final render, I'll turn that up to 75%. So it's not quite 4,000 by 5,000, but it is, I think it works out to like 3,000 by 3,750. That seems to be a good resolution where it looks good on all platforms that I posted on, but it doesn't take super long to render. Um, I see a lot of people rendering at 4,000 by 5,000. And for me, for what I do, it just doesn't really make sense to render that high unless I need to crop it in for some reason. Obviously, if it's gonna be printed somewhere, or if it's going to be projected somewhere and it needs to be really high res, then of course turn it up. But for just a regular Instagram post, you could probably go as low as like 1080 by 1350. I think that's uh, the Instagram resolution. But you, you could go a lot lower than this and it would still look fine if you're just posting it on social media. But yeah, I think for this test render, I had that like 100 and something samples. And for the final one, I went with 500 samples. Okay, here I'm just adding, well, I'm getting distracted by Spotify. And if I go back in the compositing, all I did was I added a lens distortion. I set the dispersion to 0 0.0055. I think that's the value I usually use. I might have mentioned an extra zero, but I'm pretty sure it's two zeros. Um, I put a glare note in there, but you can't actually see what it's doing. So that doesn't matter. And here I am bringing it into Photoshop now. So the first thing I'm doing in Photoshop is I'm duplicating the base layer, blurring it, and then putting the blend mode onto screen. And that's basically what the glare node does. Um, if you increase the contrast of that screen, uh, that glow layer too, it'll look a little bit more like the glare node. Um, but it's, it's basically just adding some kind of, uh, yeah, like bloom around things. Again, I'm just adding more kind of glow and bloom around everything. Here's a bit of dodging and burning. So I'm just making some of the edges and some of the stuff that I don't want people to pay attention to, just making that darker. And then I'm adding another curves layer, making all the important stuff a bit brighter. And that's one of the easiest ways to just make everything look better is you just brighten up the stuff that's important, darken down the stuff that isn't as important and just makes it more dramatic and look a lot, a lot nicer. Okay, so what I did here is after those basic adjustments, I just duplicated all the layers, merged them all together, and then converted that top layer for smart filters. And then I ran, in, ran that layer through the camera raw filter. So the reason you convert it for smart filters is because now anything I do in the camera raw filter, um, I can go back and tweak any of these settings later if I screw it up. Whereas if you don't do that step of converting it for smart filters, uh, you can't go back and change it. So I did an entire tutorial on using Photoshop to process your renders. But basically my, my whole process here is just move a slider and if it looks better, then you keep it. And if it looks worse, then put it back to where it was and don't touch it. Um, and eventually after doing that enough times, so you'll kind of get a feel for what works best with the kind of images that you're editing and what isn't gonna work. Um, yeah, so just basically tweaking the exposure contrast, adding some sharpening, adding some clarity, adding some grain. I always love adding grain. Um, onto a denoise render, it just gives it a nicer grain than Cycles does. Bring the vignette down slightly, even though I already made the edges a little darker with that uh, dodging and burning. And then I'm messing with the color calibration section. And you can see it's giving some interesting results, but it's not really what I wanted. So I went back to the color mixer to get the final uh, look here. Doing a little bit of split toning. So I'm just adding in a bit of blue into the shadows. Not too much though, it's on very subtle. And then I'm adding a color lookup table on top of all of that. So my strategy for these is just add a bunch of them and pick the one that looks best. Um, yeah, and then one final curve adjustment layer on top of everything just to top it off.
And I think I went back into Blender here and tweaked some stuff because it wasn't centered the way I wanted it to. So I just rendered it again and brought that back into Photoshop. Okay, and then I'm just running it through the exact same settings and that's that's all I did. I, you can see me brushing in a mist pass here, but it didn't, I didn't even use that. It, I turned it down so low that it's not even noticeable. So I'm not gonna go over that. And I've just ran that render through the same settings and that's it. Okay, that's it. So yeah, subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that stuff. Follow me on Instagram. I'll link my page below because I'm always posting artwork like this there. And uh, yeah, bye.